Talk about Naomi Campbell. Talk about Naomi Campbell. There's no me. No me, your mentor. Relax. Relax. I'm here to tell you today what happened. So, um, in December 2021, no, in December of 2020, Naomi was coming to Nairobi to do some shopping. Um, she was on holiday, but on a remote place. So she was in Nairobi doing shopping. And I texted her and she told me she's in Nairobi. So I was so excited to meet her. She was the first celebrity I was ever going to meet. Guys, I was to the roof. She texted me. She texted me. She was like, hey, I'm here. She texted me the location. I went directly. I went with my brother. So my brother and I, we met her. We did some shopping. And as we're shopping, she's like, oh, you know the plane that's taking us back actually has a few couple more sets do you and your brother want to join us on holiday hell yes so i so i just i was like oh that'll be so that'll be so lovely but i texted my dad i said hey get the car ready i'm coming to the house we are going to the airport in an hour to meet naomi campbell so she can take me on vacation so we go on vacation we have like a nice we had like a very nice vacation naomi took care of me the whole entire time the whole entire time we were staying on the beach we're doing this and then like this that eating just having fun you know what people do on vacation and this one time we were on the beach Naomi was like oh you know we should do um a documentary a film about you living in Kenya and I was like oh yeah that's fantastic she introduced me to a couple of people um in Hollywood it was so lovely so a couple of people she was on vacation who were coming to Nairobi after the vacation they were staying at the Kempinski so I went to see them um, at the Kempinski when the whole thing was over so I went I sat down with them I was talking to one of them and one of them was like oh it's so like how did you meet Naomi and I was like oh no I texted her on Instagram blah blah and she's like oh yeah she told us like she made you and she built you and she made your career and I was like, what? No, that's not what happened. She, and I was like, you mean like helped me and like promoted me? And he, she was like, no, like what you have is because of her. And I was like, oh yeah, no, that didn't happen. It is very important. You remember that part later. Okay. So time goes by, time goes by. March 2022. We have jumped into March 2022. I get a phone call. Um, My phone is ringing. <laughs> Naomi Campbell. Oh, so um, I pick up. I'm like, hey, sis, like, how are you? How are you doing? And she's like, Elsa, how dare you? Oh, so I'm in shock, right? I'm in shock. I don't know what's going on. So I had just, so let me tell you what happened, the context of this um, phone call. So I had just finished a docu not just the previous year, I had done a documentary on my life, about my life, about bullying, about growing up with colorism, all these things, about comedy, where I fell in love with comedy. So um, um, the film was debuting at Tribeca Film Festival and someone from Tribeca asked Naomi if she was coming and Naomi thought the film was the film she had suggested to me on the beach about me leaving Kenya. So I was like, no, 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 that's not what it's about. I tried explaining to her. And then she was like, I'll sue you for the rights of this movie. And you know I'll win, right? So I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like, this is crazy. I'm telling you, this is not, it's not about that. So I tell her, let me call you tomorrow. And she, she asked me like, why didn't you tell me when I told you at the beach? And I was like, you're Naomi Campbell. You know, like I was starstruck. Like I, like it took me very long to like process that moment. But, and I was like, I'll call you tomorrow. So the next day I had a flight. The flight I was taking from... Botswana to Ghana where I met that guy actually that's the time I was taking that flight So I was supposed to call her the next day But it was a 22 hour flight and in Ethiopia there was no service So I couldn't call her so I called her the day after immediately. I landed in Ghana So she's the first person I called I'm like hey um, Hey, blah blah like are you free to talk and she tells me you are supposed to call me tomorrow You you were supposed to call me yesterday. You didn't call me yesterday, which she was very right about and she said I have the Met Gala and she was like this is the last time I'm speaking to you have a nice life and she hung up Which I was like I was very saddened by the situation, right? But I was like if that's how she truly feels because I respect people's um space So I was like if that's how she truly feels fine. It's okay. So I let it go so uh, after that, like a few months, things started going very badly for me. Things started going haywire. And I didn't, I didn't think it was, I thought it was because of the situation. Let me not lie. But 
I was like, you know, also it can be sure. So I was like, let me go. Because also having someone like Naomi Campbell not liking you in the industry is not a good thing. So I went to her, I apologized, I apologized. I'd already apologized when the situation had happened, but I went and I apologized again and again. I started calling her, I started texting her. And then one day she just texted me and she was like, stop, stop trying to, stop calling me. I have a child to take care of. So after that i just said okay there's nothing i can do about it i started drinking that's why i even quit alcohol i started drinking um i became i started drinking a lot a lot a lot yeah and then because i wasn't sure why things were going so wrong and i couldn't put my finger on it and then a few months later i met edward Enifor at a party and edward Enifor is one of oh my goodness he's one of the people i adore the most so i was like oh my goodness that's edward i have to go say hi so i go i say i'm like hey edward i'm such a big fan and he looks at me he looks at me he's like i know you and then he said something that made me think the situation with naomi was causing like some of the trials and tribulations i was currently going through so I was like, you know what? I need to fix this. So I went to one of our mutual friends and I was like, hey, please, can you um, tell Naomi? Because I knew they were going on holiday together. So I was like, hey, can you please tell Naomi to text me? And she was like, yeah, I'll make sure and blah, blah. So a couple of days went by and then Naomi finally texted me and she was like, yeah, I let that go a long time ago. I'm not one to hold a grudge. She sent me a very lovely text. She said, happy new year. So after that, after that happened, this was the new year 2023. So after that happened, every single step I made, every single move I made, I told Naomi, every single thing I did, I told Naomi, I would... <laughs> breathe i tell naomi whether she would reply or not i would send her a message because i didn't want what happened to happen again and after some time after a few weeks i called my mom and i was like this isn't normal this doesn't feel healthy it feels it kind of feels you know it doesn't feel too nice it, it, there's nothing healthy or normal about this and i was like i don't want to be in a situation like this so after that, I just decided it is healthier for me to completely remove myself from the situation and get myself out. And you remember earlier when I said my friends said, um, the, the ones Naomi had introduced me to, when they said, oh, Naomi had made you. You remember when I said that? So I want to, I just want to um, acknowledge that and say that even through through all this right even through everything that happened first of all number one obviously i played a part in it because i am part of the story every in any situation you are in you play a part you play a role and i had my role and i apologize for my role and something else when she said she made me i'm not going to speak on that but i will say that naomi did give me a lot of credibility especially when i first entered the industry she gave me a lot of credibility and that's not something that i can just say oh you know this happened and naomi blah, blah, blah. i can't say that she did hold hold me up high and she introduced me to a lot of people she made me feel special she did a lot of things for me so i wouldn't say she made me but she did play um a big role in a lot of the things that i did in that space during that time so yeah me and her we're not friends we're not enemies we're not anything just not really in association so we're just strangers welcome back to my channel mother suckers hey i am eloho so i wanted to bring this story to your attention if you didn't know recently kenyan influencer elsa majimbo shared a story time on tiktok about how she met and fell out with naomi campbell the video got millions of views but she did end up deleting it and said i stand by my words content in my decision the tweets are deleted due to seeking peace not fear y'all need to understand this is something that happened since i was 19. my goal is now happiness and so people were actually shocked to find out this was the truth going on behind the scenes between her and naomi campbell if you don't know elsa went viral in 2020 here's one of her videos if you don't spend your money then who will <laughs> what if all your money ends i've been broke before <laughs> i didn't die <laughs> if i spend money i'm paying taxes so i'm building my country <laughs>
it's called being patriotic <laughs> i'm practicing for being rich <laughs> And so people fell in love with Elsa's videos. You have this African girl who's super funny. She comes on camera how she wants, when she wants, and says whatever the hell she wants. But we watched her blossom into a butterfly and really become a fashion girly iconic, if you ask me. And many people did credit Naomi Campbell for this transition in her career. You know, I was stressed the other day for a gala. And like I got questions from the magazines and Ebony was hosting the gala and I was being asked, who designer are you wearing? Who are you wearing? That dress was $18 and I wore it because it was cheap and cute. I feel like for one night, it is absolutely insane to spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on a dress. Elsa, but you can afford it. So what though? Like, do not spend money just because you have it. I think no one should prove anything to anyone if you can be cheap be cheap i choose to be cheap and i like it because i make money and i keep my money she became the new it model s girl from kenya gracing the covers of magazines going to galas and industry events but as we know everything that glitters in hollywood is not gold she says that her fallout with Naomi Campbell led to her abusing alcohol and tweeted, Naomi obviously never force fed me alcohol. The situation led to the action, my action. As I said, my part was played and responsibility is mine. She also tweeted, she threatened to sue and post screenshots of a time I asked her to help me with some older white executives that were trying to sleep with me. I'm now moving on and leaving it in the past. Now, I know Elsa says that she wanna keep things in the past, but after that tweet, there's absolutely no way society can do that at this point. Because what do you mean Naomi Campbell threatened to expose messages of you asking her for help because some older white male executives were trying to sexually assault you? Like, what do you mean? What older white male executives? We need names, dates, locations. Somebody gotta go to jail. When they met in 2020, she was 18 years old. Her mentor, Naomi Campbell, was about 50 at that time, old enough to be her mama. She was obviously enamored and starstruck to be on this platform and level with Naomi Campbell. And so yes, Naomi Campbell had the responsibility of protecting her, of watching out for her mentally and physically. And so if she's reaching out to you saying, hey, these older white men are trying to sleep with me, what was your response? What was your way of protecting her? Why would you then throw that in her face as blackmail? This story time really took a turn for the worse and there was so much unsaid. And I don't know if this is related, but I do follow Elsa on Instagram. And I remember she posted that this man has been stalking her and following her and harassing her for eight months. Um, and she says the only thing worse than a psycho is a psycho with money. She says whoever owns this car has been stalking me from last year, June. And the last video is him almost following me to my house today before I spotted him. It's not safe for me out there, mostly due to him. I've tried everything everything if anyone has any info on him please let me know and so she does live in kenya so if you have any information and you live in the area please everyone report this license plate to the authorities now i bring this up because it's interesting how she mentioned in the video that ever since she agreed to do a documentary that naomi campbell thought she stole the idea from her she said her life has been in turmoil ever since and so I'm actually afraid for her at this point. We hear a lot of stories about models in Africa, you know, going missing, being assaulted, being unalived with no guarantee of security and justice. So this woman needs to be protected at all costs. She's come out against a giant in the industry, Naomi Campbell, and all of these older white male executives, again, protect this woman at all costs. But y'all let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. I want to hear what you guys think. What are your thoughts on the story time? How do you feel about Naomi Campbell telling people that she made Elsa and that she's the reason why Elsa has this career? How do you feel about her switching up, cutting her off and saying, I will sue you and expose you if you put the documentary out? Child, what are your current thoughts on Elsa being stalked? 
Do you think she should have told the public? Do you think she should have said nothing at all? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section and I will be sure to see you at the next video. Later. What if all your money ends? I've been broke before. <laughs> I didn't die. <laughs>